This is Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about something that's really important but doesn't require a lot of sewing. It's about the things that you need to learn before you even push the foot control on your sewing machine, and that's TNT. No, not dynamite, silly. TNT, thread needle and tension. <laughs> well, now that we've determined that TNT isn't dynamite, that it's actually thread, needle, and tension, we need to start talking about some thread. Now, there are so many different kinds of thread, but I thought I would just narrow this down to what Bernina of Naperville carries. So I have this chart up here where I've kind of... Uh, wheedled it down from fiber, staple, weight, and my sage advice. So the fibers that we carry at Bernina of Naperville that make up our thread is we have cotton thread, we have polyester thread, we have some rayon thread, acrylic thread, nylon, and silk. Now staple is the length of the fibers that go into making the thread. So how long is the fiber before it gets twisted into thread? So that is either a long staple if it's long or a short staple if it's short. So long staple threads are gonna be the good quality threads that we carry at Bernina of Naperville. Short staple threads are what you find in the grab bin. That's the, the really cheap thread. It's what is in the spools of thread in the emergency sewing kits that you might find at the grocery store. So short thread should, short staple thread should not be put into your sewing machine because it's either gonna break or it's gonna fuzz it up a lot. Now the weight of the thread is also a thing. It's one of those things that is like an enigma because the smaller the number, the thicker the thread, and the higher the number, the thinner the thread. So you'll see everything, and honestly, we even have an eight weight thread at the store. So you'll see anything from eight weight to 100 weight. And somewhere in that 40 to 50 weight is where we have most of our threads. But as we talk about the threads, I will also tell you what the weight is. So the best advice that I can give you during this presentation is that if your thread is on a styrofoam or wooden spool, you should use it as a display item in your curio cabinet, not in your machine. And I'm not even being sarcastic. Honestly, if it's really old, you don't wanna put it in your nice sewing machine. Another thing is, is if it was really cheap and it came from unknown origins, you may not want to use it. I have honestly in my sewing career heard all kinds of horror stories about people getting a good deal on thread or buying it from, you know, grandma's yard sale or, or what have you. It's amazing what kind of bacteria, spores, and weird stuff can linger in a spool of thread. And you just don't want to be running that through your machine. Threads that are dual duty are threads that have a polyester core but have cotton wrapped around it and basically as that thread goes through your machine the cotton just scrapes off the poly core and it ends up in your machine. So use this thread for hand basting or basting those little mini hexes. Don't, don't put that in your machine either. All right, so we carry the following brands and I'm just gonna break down each one. So we're gonna start, and this is an alpha, no, it's not in alphabetical order. <laughs> Never mind. All right, so we're just gonna start with Orophil. So Orophil is a popular thread. It is um, the, the kind that we carry at the store, although they carry many, many different types of thread. We carry their 50 weight large spools, which is 1,422 yards. So the Orophil thread is a long staple Egyptian cotton that's milled in Milan. Now, you're gonna hear me talk a lot about Egyptian cotton because Mettler makes theirs out of Egyptian cotton as well. But that is the area where the cotton grows the strongest and has the best quality. So for sure, you wanna look for that. So I just mentioned Mettler. So we carry a lot of Mettler thread. We carry Mettler that's polyester and cotton. And let's just go and, and first look at these threads. So the first thing I want to say is that Mettler is a predominantly manufactured thread in the Czech Republic and Germany. 
And the first one that we're going to look at is their thickest thread, which is the cordonnet. Now this cordonnet thread is, is a 30 weight, but it really feels 8-bit thicker. It actually has the hand more of a 12 weight thread and this polyester thread is more like gimp and it would be used for corded buttonholes, gathering, and some hand embroidery applications. Metrazine, which is a polyester thread, is a 50 weight. So this is what you put in your sewing machine for your regular all-purpose sewing. It's lint-free, it is ironable, and it's color fast. Now getting into their cotton, so they call their cotton thread silk finish, and the most popular weight that we carry, and, and really I would say for Mettler, is their silk finish 50 weight thread. So this is Egyptian cotton with that long staple that we're looking for. It's great for quilting, piecing, and heirloom work. Now Mettler makes a little bit thicker thread, which is a 40 weight, and this one we use at the store for quilting and decorative stitches. So we carry this thread on the skinny or on the smaller spools, but we also carry it in the big cones because the long arm quilting is really pretty using this thread. Seraline is a polyester thread that is quite different from metrazine because this polyester thread is super thin. It's 60 weight and it's good for invisible seams. And when we mention invisible seams, this would be like a blind hem stitch or somewhere where you really want your stitching to not show up very much. I also really like it for continuous line quilting because sometimes when you're doing quilting and you quilt along, you need to backtrack over the quilting that you just created. And sometimes if the thread is too thick, you get, you know, it's too dominant and you just want texture. So this would be a perfect thread for overstitching something. And also it's great in overlockers and blind stitching. Finally, Seracor, this is a polyester thread that's 50 weight, and we use this at the store twofold. First of all, we use it in our long arm quilting. It works really well on the Q20 and the Q24, but I also use it in our overlockers because a lot of our overlockers that we have also do cover stitching, and with my cover stitching, I like to have a thread that performs as well as the regular thread, not that cheapy, fuzzy, wuzzy stuff that you might see, um, you know, like in the bargain bin again at other big box sewing stores. Elo Flex Thread. Now this is a stretchable thread and it is the only Coats brand that we carry. Uh, it's an innovative performance thread because you can sew the really um, durable workout wear with this thread and get a level of stretch that you just simply can't with regular thread. Now you would still follow the same uh, advice for sewing with knits using maybe a double needle for a hem so you get a little bit of stretch and also using a zigzag stitch in certain areas or the super stretch stitch that you can find on your Berninas. But this, this is a really good thread for that application but please don't use this for your regular sewing. It's not going to give you a good result. Isocord. Now, I have more than just isocord on this section, but we're going to start with just isocord thread. It's 100% polyester 40 weight. This thread is perfect for machine embroidery and for high stitching. It's color safe. It's completely lint free and it's available in the Mini Kings. Those are the 1000 meter spools and 5000 meter spools, which they call their King spools. Now, I am replacing all of my personal stash with the 5000 meters because I just use it so often and our E16, our industrial uh, 16 needle embroidery machine, loves this stuff. Uh, a thread that, you know, we all want the perfect metallic thread sometimes and Yenmet, it, it meets that bar. Um, Yenmet metallic threads available in all different kinds of colors um, as well as being opalescent in some colors and it's just really nice and, and we have a nice display of it at the store. This thread is not just a poly core wrapped with the tinsel, but it's those strands then wrapped together and it produces a high speed sewing metallic thread. Finally, 
We, when you do embroidery, you really want your bobbin thread to just remain the same and it's the upper thread that you keep changing. But another thing about the bobbin thread is that you want something that's going to grip your upper thread well so that you get a nice smooth looking stitch. And that's why I recommend the OESD bobbin fill. It's 100% polyester, it's a 60 weight, and when you buy it, you get 5,500 meters. It's available in black and white, and you typically match. If you have a dark background, then you pick the black, and if you have a light background, then you pick the white. Superior thread is where we start getting into some of our specialty threads. The bottom line is similar to the Sarah the seraline thread that Mettler makes. However, there are a lot more colors of bottom line available. Uh, it's 100% polyester. It's 60 weight. So once again, it's perfect for bobbin thread. It's lint free. It's wonderful, wonderful for micro stippling. And it also is very nice for blind hems, like invisible sewing techniques, as well as that over stitching with your quilting, your continuous line quilting. Silk kimono thread. I was first turned on to this type of thread by Linda Lee, who runs the sewing workshop. This thread is 100% uh, silk and it's a hundred weight. So this is like sewing with a strand of hair. Now what Linda had me use this thread for is she had me pick black fabric and chartreuse thread. I thought she was crazy, but really what she was trying to get the point across is that the chartreuse thread was practically invisible in that black fabric. So this is good for hand applique, English paper piecing. It's good for micro stippling and quilting and garment blind hems. So so keep that in mind when you're trying to, you know, you're working on something precious and you really need a high quality thread to do some of your handwork or, or your picking work. Magnifico. Now this is a polyester thread that's a little bit different than isocord. This is what is called a trilobal polyester, and that means that it's got a high sheen because of how the thread is made. And this thread is really pretty in decorative uh, fiber embellishment quilting. It's pretty on decorative stitches and also in your embroidery. It comes on a 500 yard spool. Razzle Dazzle. Razzle Dazzle is a metallic and polyester and all kinds of stuff twisted into an eight weight thread. Obviously with eight weight, you're not going to be feeding this through your needle. This thread is meant to go through the bobbin. So you're going to use this for your couching or bobbin work or even I call it quilting from the back, but I believe a lot of other people call it reverse quilting. Finally, we carry a water-soluble thread from Superior. It's called Vanish, and I've used this a lot just for regular basting, but I've also used it to kind of quilt an area that I want to corral and then turn my quilt upside down and fill that area with bobbin work. So when you see me use a lot of Razzle Dazzle, you'll also see me use a lot of this Vanish thread. Wonderfill. Wonderfill makes the funnest thread. And the two kinds that we carry that are super awesome is the flash thread. Now the flash thread is a polyester thread and it is used for reflection. Although it comes in different colors like blue, red, green, and gray, and, and some other colors, when you stitch out this thread and then shine a bright light on it, it literally looks like a light. And it's perfect if you want to add some kind of reflective element to kids' clothes or your dog's leash or something like that. So this thread is totally fun. Another fun thread is the Aurora thread. This is their glow-in-the-dark thread. And the lighter the thread, the brighter the glow. And also, just sewing a single strand of the thread, it doesn't glow as much. So this is something where you want to use your glow-in-the-dark with satin stitching or embroidery areas, um, rather than just you know quilting the quilt with it and thinking it's going to glow. So I just want to set those expectations for you. Invisifil is a new thread that we're carrying thanks to Catherine Redford who came by and did our episode of 
talk so. And she, of course, gave us the English paper piecing demo. So she loves this thread because it is a cottonized polyester. It's a hundred weight, so it's super invisible and it's perfect for her hand English paper piecing. Finally, YLI. I really, really like the YLI invisible thread. Now, YLI makes their nylon monofilament thread um, out of nylon, and it's a 0 .004 thickness, and it's perfect for invisible applique. It's also good for machine quilting and more. It's available in smoke or clear. And what I really, really, really want to get through to you is that this will not melt with our hot irons. And we use those awesome Laura Star irons at the store, and this thread will not melt, I swear. And so does YLI. So please trust me on this one. When you come into the store and you're a little irritated with me that I don't have polyester invisible thread, it's because this nylon thread is really nice and you're going to love it. And it works really, really well. And it works on our Q-series as well as our domestic machines. And I've even done an application where I've put this in my serger. So do you feel like you've learned everything you need to learn about thread? Excellent. We can cross that off the list. Now we're going to move on to needles. So visit the store and we will be happy to give you a complimentary Smets needle brochure. But let's just go through the type, the size, the points, and the specialty. So there are all different kinds of types of needles. And pretty much we have our universal needles, which are jack of all trades, master of none. There are embroidery needles, microtex. Oh my God, what does this, this even mean? Top stitch, jersey stretch and ballpoint, jeans, metallic, quilting, leather. These are all types of needles meant for certain applications. So your embroidery needles are going to have an eye that is a little bit coated so that as it does fast stitching, you're not going to have a lot of friction on your thread. It also is going to have a sharp point. The universal needles point is neither sharp nor blunt. It's somewhere in the middle. Microtex needles are very, very sharp. And they're kind of, they're designed to go through these microfibers, these fibers that are made from not necessarily cotton, but other types of challenging materials to sew through. That's their intent. But a microtex needle will really give you a nice straight stitch on any material that you're sewing on. And I really, really like them when I'm doing top stitching on cotton or poly or when I'm making a garment and I really need my stitches to look perfect. Top stitching needles are wonderful because they have a large eye that is very non-abrasive to the material. It's also a large eye that can accommodate thicker thread. So if you're using some of the flash thread or some of the uh, glow-in-the-dark thread, they also work very well. Jersey stretch are ballpoint needles. So ballpoint needles are good when you don't want your needle to cut the fiber because we all know what happens when pantyhose are cut or, or a knit gets, gets a cut, you get a run. And so this avoids that by using a needle that tip that kind of shoves the fibers aside rather than penetrating them. Jeans needles have more of a rigid shaft, a sharp point, and an a needle that can accommodate a heavier thread. Then there's metallic needles, which are similar to top stitch. They're designed for metallic threads. Quilting needles are sharp, but they have a scarf. That's the little indentation behind a needle. And those are designed for um, going through thicknesses, making sure that that needle can pick the thread up when it goes through layers of quilt batting. And then finally, a leather needle literally is going to cut into the hide to form a stitch. Needles, they come in different sizes, and, and you see two sizes on a needle when you purchase them. The first number is the size in the metric system, and the other number is the size in the standard system. So basically, you've got 60, 70, 75, 80, 90, 100, 110, and 120. Those are the sizes to choose from. And the higher the number, the thicker the needle. The point, we've got a sharp point, a ball point, and a universal. 
Then there's even specialty needles. So they're twin needles or double needles. Double needles, the measurement that you're seeing under this, the 1.6, the 2.0, the 2.5, these are all the distances between the double needles. And be sure if you're going to use a 6 millimeter or an 8 millimeter double needle that you have a machine that can accommodate 9 millimeter wide stitching. There's even triple needles. Those are three needles rather than two. There's a wing needle. A wing needle looks like an arrow. So the basics. So along with thread, needles are very important to stitch formation. So many of your problems that you might have may actually be issues with your needle. And I know a lot of people that I talk to are actually shocked that they actually have to change their needles because needles bend. So mechanical problems and damage to fabrics can be traced to a bent needle or an incorrect size or type of needle. Um, and I think that, you know, the techs at Bernita, they did some uh, research here and they found that about 60% of all needles are discarded at some stage of production. So, you know, it's possible that even out of the box, you could get some weird needle that's not quite right. Um, the needle system that our domestic machines use and even our um, Q-series machines use is the 130-705H. The needle point is to assure proper stitch formation and avoid fabric damage. You want it to always be nice and pointy, not rough feeling. The needle size, you're going to use a smaller size for lightweight fabrics and a larger size for heavier fabrics. And if the needle is too small, the thread can't stay in the groove to form a loop to be picked up by the hook point. If the needle's bent, the thread loop forms too far away from the hook point and the hook can't enter the loop to form the stitch. Or if the needle is blunt, the needle may not pierce the fabric so no thread loop forms to make a stitch. I swear I'm trying not to speak a different language for you, but there is an anatomy of the needle. Um, the needle shank should have a flat piece and the flat piece goes towards the back and the needle can really only be inserted one way. You always want to make sure when you insert your needle that you put it up in the machine as far up as you possibly can. There's a groove in front of the needle that receives the thread and holds the thread in place. I mentioned when I talked about quilting needles that there's a scarf on the back of the needle and that scarf on the back of the needle is going to determine at what point when the needle goes into the material the loop is formed. The eye is the hole, that's where you put the thread through, and then of course the point. So when and how often should you change your needle? So really needles should be changed every four to six hours of sewing. The needle, it's the most inexpensive part of your sewing machine, but it's one of the most crucial for getting good results and keeping your machine running well. In fact, a friend of mine just posted on Facebook something that I thought was quite pertinent to this to this presentation and she said that needles are cheap but her sewing projects aren't and so I think that if you feel like something is just not right with the needle and you should change it then you really should change it and make sure that you have a little bit of supply of them because you know a lot of us sew late at night when Bernina of Naperville isn't necessarily open. So European needles are chrome plated to glide in and out of the fabric easily. Now, there are also many different kinds of needles now. There are pro needles, Schmetz has a chrome needle. Um, these pro needles and the, and the chrome needles are meant to last a little bit longer in your machine. So you may get eight hours out of those rather than six. The selected thread should fit in the groove on the front of the needle, and if it isn't protected by the groove, a needle with a larger groove should be used. So that goes along with thicker thread, thicker needle, thicker material. So you always want to have these things kind of in mind. And always make sure the needles are fully inserted, just like I said earlier. So what do the parts do? I mentioned that the scarf of the needle determines when the loop is created. So quilting needles have the longer scarf allowing the needle to penetrate thicker needle before making a loop. And the groove in the shaft of the needle protects the thread. And the eye may be large or small depending on the type of the needle. So like I mentioned earlier, top stitch needles have a larger eye because you may be using a thicker thread and going through more material with a top stitch needle. Metallic needles have a large eye that is coated to prevent friction. 
and the point can be sharp or blunt, just like I mentioned, sharp, or like the micro Microtex needles, um, kind of sharp, universals, <laughs> ballpoint or jersey, stretch and ballpoint. So when you either want to cut the fibers of the material to make it, when you don't want to cut the fibers of the material to make a perfect straight stitch, or you want to move them out of the way to prevent a run. So that's, that's our basics of determining the, the needle. So we've done thread, we've done needles, and now stop stressing, but we are going to talk about tension. So tension, what is the definition? In the sewing world, the definition of tension is the manner in which the upper thread or the thread spool links together with the lower thread or the bobbin. And the tension should be balanced. The upper thread should meet the bobbin thread exactly at the fabric thickness center. Sometimes it's perfect and easy to get and sometimes not so much. If you're sewing two thin pieces of fabric together with thicker thread, you are going to see the top thread poking down to the bottom. And no matter what you do to adjust that tension on your machine, you probably aren't going to get it perfect. So let's not try to defy the laws of physics here. We got to use a little bit of common sense. But balance stitch should look like the image on the top to the right, where our blue thread is the top and the red line is the bottom thread and everybody is happy and it meets in the middle. Loose upper tension or tighter lower tension looks like the image on the right in the middle. More blue, less red. Maybe even the blue is poking through to the bottom. The bottom piece on the right is loose lower tension or tight upper tension. Now sometimes, when it's really extreme, it's a threading issue. You know, the, when you're, you've got super tight upper tension, that might be it's snagged on something at the top. If it's super tight down below, maybe it's not in the bobbin correctly, or maybe there's some kind of obstruction. So what we want to reduce is our headaches when we look at this stuff. So one thing to remember is the higher the number, the tighter the tension or greater the tension. So when we're saying change your tension to eight, that means we want you to have a tighter tension. When we're saying put the tension at one, that means that's a very loose tension. So big ugly goops or nesting on the bottom is usually an upper threading error. And thinner thread maybe require more tension, while thicker thread might require less tension. And don't be afraid to change your tension. You have a little dial. You have a number on the machine. You can always go back on the Bernina machines with the touch screen. You have a little clear button. Bada bing, bada boom. It goes back to the factory or to the default setting. You're fine. So just the first thing about tension is to not be tense about tension. Now, severe tension issues. The one thing that when somebody gets a Bernina and you have that freehand system, sometimes leaning on the freehand system while you're sewing can kind of open the tension discs and give you this severe tension issue. Not threading the machine with the presser foot up. You have to lift the foot up to open up the tension discs, then thread, then lower the foot down. That kind of clamps that thread into place and puts it in the tension discs not inserting your needle all the way, or a bent, old, or wrong needle. See how it's all going back full circle to, you know, the thread, the needle, the tension, it all works together. So if you have super tight upper tension, it's possible that the bobbin is not loaded correctly, the bobbin's in backwards. Now, <laughs> Lucky, lucky, lucky to all of you with the Bernina 4, 5, and 7 series, because you can only put your bobbin in one way. And for those of you with the Q series, you know when you are winding your bobbin, you give it the Swiss kiss, but then when you load your bobbin, you want to read the Bernina logo. These apply. So on the Q series and on your CB hook Berninas, like the 3 series and the 215 and some of the older models, you want to make sure that when you pull your bobbin, it spins clockwise. And then upper thread obstruction is stuck. This is probably one of the main ones that we see for super loose bobbin tension is that the upper thread is just on something weird. So there you go. We did thread, we did needle, and we did tension. And if you stick to these things, you're going to see fireworks 
but they're going to be fireworks of success. Oh God. Yeah, I really, I really did just do that. Wasn't that easy? All right. So now the next step is to come on down to Bernina of Naperville and make sure you sign up for some of our hands-on classes. Uh, to learn how to use your machine. And if you can't do that, hey, stay tuned to our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. Do you remember it? YouTube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. <laughs> then like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And if you want alerts when we upload new videos, hit the little bell. Because no matter, even though we are doing some in-store classes, we are also here on YouTube to help you get sewing. So that's all for me. Uh, I will sew with you later. <laughs> Thanks.